Okay, oh, park brake on. Okay, off we go, Albert. Manhandle those gears. I hope that's third, it is, we're away. Okay, today Albert and I are in an Albert Blue Carrera T from 1972. It's just a little bit too perfect in a way. I had a brand new Carrera T last week on my channel and now we're getting an original Carrera T. So today is sweltering hot so I might be a bit sweaty but it doesn't diminish my enjoyment of driving a classic Porsche. So as I said this is a 1972 Carrera T in Albert Blue. It's actually got a 1974 2.7 litre engine in it so it's actually a sleeper. So we're looking to drag race any Ferraris that may pull up beside us and think they've got us. So what's it like to drive? Well there's a lot of sensory input as you might imagine. You need to wrestle the gears. Obviously the pedals are classic Porsche pedals which go down onto the floor. So I push the clutch down on the floor, wrestle it into third gear, plant my foot. And back into fourth. It's actually got a bit of grunt to it. And being an older Porsche, get a bit of speed, 80 or 90 miles an hour, and you feel like you're doing, you know, 160. But it's the whole experience, not just the power, it's the whole experience. It's the noise, it's the wind in your hair, it's the lack of air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun to drive. This car's really more suited to back roads and highways, but the needs of a YouTube channel require us to get good external shots, so here we are on the highway. It's still quite an experience. So there's some cool things about the 72 Porsches. It has an oil filler cap on the side. They thought it would be clever to move some of the weight forward so they put the oil filler cap forward. But of course, people would pull up to gas stations and think that that's where the gas went and fill up the engine with gas. So only one year of Porsche 911s had the oil filler on the side. Okay, I chop it out of fifth, down to fourth. And then again down to third, wrestle it in there and punch it. She's a goer! <laughs> oh, really get your heart racing this car. Yeah, of course, no power brakes, no power anything. So you really have to be on it. You have to be planning ahead a little bit. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride generally. How are you finding it, Albert? And because it's Albert Blue, that's why the uh, vanity plate on this is Bertie. So with 50 years separating the modern Carrera T with the original Carrera T, as you can imagine, there's very few similarities between these two cars driving wise. But the thing that I notice the most is the size and the weight. There's a thousand pounds difference, which is like adding Tony Soprano to the front seat, a donkey to the back seat, and a 12 bottle wine fridge, $269 on special Skymall magazine, to the roof of this car even to get it close to the weight of the modern car. Of course, the modern car is so much more powerful, so much more planted, so much easier to drive, yet there's really no comparing these two cars. But it is interesting to drive the original. Obviously, it's nowhere near as safe as the modern car, but it is a lot more challenging and engaging to drive than the modern Carrera T. Strangely, the first time I was aware that there was even a model called the Carrera T was by seeing it in the 1983 drama The Big Chill. I was just a child at the time and didn't understand the movie, but I got to watch it anyway and I saw the car and I thought, man, that is a cool car. It was driven by William Hurt's character Nick, who was a bit of a drug addict. And the car was an older model, a 1969 model, and very beat up, but despite that, I watched the whole movie hoping to catch glimpses of the car all the way through. Okay, so let's stop at my place and take a look at some of the details on this beautifully preserved 72 911T. Starting up at the frunk, interesting to see how shallow and flat the original frunks were compared with the deep modern frunks. Also up front, these models had two batteries, one on either side, four to the wheel wells for even weight distribution. Check out the size of the tyres, 18570s on the rear back then. 
Out back, of course, you can see the whole engine, unlike the modern cars. In this 2.7, there's a twin Weber setup, which helps with that slightly higher top end. Inside, the T-cabin is beautifully restored with a bit of a mix of original and updated parts. A few little features you won't find on modern 911s, like these two extra levers next to the park brake. The one on the left is to advance the idle when warming up the engine. And the red one, well, that's for the heater control, lets the hot air into the car. Over on the left of the steering column, there is an emergency button, you know, for emergencies. How cool is that? And finally, check out underneath. This has to be the most oil-free, air-cooled 911 I've ever seen. Anyway, I wanted to give a very special thanks to my friend Derek for taking the time to drive this bit of Porsche automotive history all the way down from New Hampshire just to share it with us. Amazing. And I wanted to thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye then.